So to start off or to open, um, what the hell was that? Like really, what what the hell is wrong with this family? Like for real? Seriously though, though what no? What is this family's like issue, bro? everyone welcome back to the hidden in the thrones podcast the show where i read the game of thrones books for the first time and give you my genuine reactions and thoughts my name is Kershaw mike host and creator of this podcast and i hope that you've been having a decent week thus far um i know that it's been pretty wild lately but here's hoping that you had a really really decent week thus far If you're here for the first time, welcome aboard. It's always good to have New Year's on the podcast. And if you're back for the umpteen time, I don't know what to tell you, boo. You're officially trapped and there's nothing that you can do about it. (laughs) You're in it for the long haul, bro. That's it. That's it. You're locked in. That's it. But wonderful to have you again. Uh, So I was listening to some music when I was planning this podcast. Uh, some French pop tunes, and then I switched over to um, Vanessa Carlton's A Thousand Miles. Listen, the piano in that song will never not be iconic. And, um, okay, and then I went over to some plain white tees, and then I hit Bruno Mars, uh, Just the Way You Are, that particular song. It's a pretty song. Great song. I appreciate the effort behind the message, but two things kind of bother me. So, the first one... Um, there is no way on God's green earth that that impossibly beautiful girl in the video doesn't know that she's quite frankly gorgeous. No way. No way at all. Like, what kind of trauma do you have to have? Well, okay, that's probably not fair. It's, it's, okay, that's not fair because that's not impossible. People go through a lot and you never know what they're experiencing or feeling so that's probably not a fair assessment but it's kind of hard to believe given how amusing she is or how amazing she looks that she doesn't believe him when she when he says she's not beautiful i mean i get his message but like it's kind of hard to at least for me it's kind of hard to believe i don't know but um the second thing is that Bruno Bruno you destroyed a perfectly good tape to make was what is that they call that a collage or a, I don't know what is what do you call that thing where you use string to make like art and whatever I don't know what you call that but like a collage or something I don't know what you call that anyway that is wasting good tape and as a 90s, or at least a 90s born kid, that doesn't sit right with my spirit. Alright? I'm sorry. That's good tape. I don't care if you like her. I don't care if you think she's pretty and you want to make a point. No. Cassettes are legendary and should be treated as such. That's rude. That's that's off, bro. Shame on you, bro, Mars. Shame on you. Oh, it's iconic song. But shame on you for that. Gosh, it's such a waste of tape. Oh, one more thing before I get into the topic because I don't want to ramble on too long. Uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, iconic song. We don't need to talk about it, how iconic it is, how legendary it is. But there's this part that I never really noticed before and I'm only just noticing it now. And I feel like I should share before we get into the topic. You know, in the beginning of the song where it comes, goes, easy come, easy go. So... I only just realized yesterday, listening listening to it on my speakers, that it does this thing where it um where the first easy come is on one side of the speaker and then it goes to the other side of the speaker and it kind of like travels. Yo, how come nobody told me about that 
epic part, bro. That is a piece of production genius. Like, when I heard it, it, I'm, it probably was playing through my earphones and I never really just noticed it. And it does that several times during the song too. Can't remember what was the other part in the song I did it, but that first easy come, easy go. That is production genius and that produ- listen. Oh gosh. The, the, I mean the whole song is like legendary, obviously. And I know every word to it as everybody should at this point. But that particular part of the song, who oh, baby. Oh my gosh. Iconic, legendary. Sheesh, I, I really I really hate that I haven't paid attention to that before. Um But I you know what? It it's such it's it's so good. It's it's so good. Uh but let me know if you guys notice it or not. Let me know if um if I was the only one if the, if I'm the Johnny come lately to the party or if that part just shook you as well. Also let me know if you're from if you're nineties born or if you're a nineties kid if that tape thing bothers you as much and you can do that by connecting with me on the turbulent book home podcast twitter page that's turbulent book w1 or you can at me personally and respectfully at at miss mike 772 that's at m s m i k e 772 on twitter connect with me there and let me know what you guys think or you can if you have the anchor app you can leave me a message a voice message yeah we can do that now so you have three ways of connecting with me and let me know your thoughts not just on the game of thrones books but also on uh some great music and some iconic pieces of music that you like or anything that bothers you at all just connect with me and let's have a proper conversation Today's two episodes will be from the perspective of Bran, who I'm only just realizing stands for Brandon. Yeah, I know. Kind of slow. Forgive me. But the two perspectives for this episode are from um, the perspective of Bran and Tyrion. And I'm going to flip the script today and start with the latter chapter because we need to talk about that Bran chapter like nobody's business. Alright? So, in Tyrion's chapter... Dang, we really can't talk about that unless we talk about branch chapter, can we? Uh, I'll figure it out, I'll figure it out. Anyway, the main thing is that we get to realize, or at least I did get to realize that Tyrion is very observant. And he's brilliant. And he reads. And there's dimension beyond the physical features with which everyone unknowingly chooses to focus on. Right in the book, they keep mentioning like people keep referring to him as as the dwarf and as the little man. And um, there was a point in the chapter where, at least in Tyrion's chapter, where uh, oh, that's when he went down to meet his nephew Joffrey and Joffrey's bodyguard, the Hound, and um, he came off the wall, and the Hound said something to the extent of, you know, ghosts in the air or something or whatever, and. He was pretty much disrespectful. And everybody chooses to focus on that. And not on the fact that this man is actually really super brilliant. And I mean, I shouldn't be surprised because that is the way that the world really works. But I mean, it's kind of just still hard to see. Anyway, I'm, I'm skipping to the part that cements his perspective, his perceptive nature for me. Because that's kind of like embedded in the last chapter, in Bran's chapter. But he leaves the library where he is reading and I fail to understand how we could ever trust, mistrust anybody that doesn't read. But that's the story. Anyway. And he comes across his nephew and his bodyguard, like I was saying. And they were ill-speaking Bran. That's when he hopped off the wall. And But it gets down to a point where Jeffrey and the Hound are talking about killing Bran's wolf. And at this point, Bran's wolf doesn't have a name yet. So it's just really Bran's wolf. I'll say this. Villains almost never like dogs and are almost never kind to dogs. That's almost always a good way of deciding whether somebody is a villain or not. I know, naive, but I always, listen, put a dog in front of a villain and nine out of ten times, the villain will not treat the dog well, or they will be just like 
I'm not saying that, you know, villains always, like, are afraid of dogs or wary of dogs. That's not the case at all. There's some great people who are, like, just afraid of dogs. But usually, villains are the ones that treat dogs pretty badly. Maybe it's because dogs can sniff out um, people's BS or sniff through, right, people's BS. And, well, cats. Cats just can't stand BS, you know? Or they can't stand much at all. But, I mean, generally dogs can sniff through people's garbage and they can see right through dogs are dogs are loving and gentle and honest and they they're pretty good judge of character you know but it's a nice subtle message Ugh, keep tapping my mouth i'm so sorry i know that's an annoying noise I, i'm i'm already hearing somebody say can you stop tapping your mouth i don't know why i'm doing that i never tap my mouth when i speak i never do Ugh. anyway yeah, so it's a nice little message from Martin yet again. He's doing he's he does these nice little subtle messages and these these symbolisms so well and they're so great once you take the time to just kind of like piece them together. They're such great pieces of the puzzle. And because I can't talk about the rest of the chapter without talking about branch chapter we have to leave this chapter and go immediately there's nothing that really happened uh there was it when he went to the feast but of course we have to go to branch chapter to talk about that but i just want us to kind of note again that martin doesn't make Tyrion a caricature in any way he actually gives him depth and dimension and i really really appreciate martin for taking the time to give him a fair shake really Hey there. All the big podcasts usually take this opportunity to talk about their sponsors. This podcast doesn't have any. But there's nothing like speaking it into existence before it happens. So, this is an ad space and this is made for the Hidden in the Thrones podcast. Now on Google Podcasts, Spotify, Pocket Casts, Breaker, Radio Public, and Anchor. So let's start from the beginning. Bran likes to climb. It helps him calm down, tickle his head, and whatever. But his mom was afraid of him falling and forbade him to do it. Right? Of course, he doesn't listen. And that's how we ended up with this chapter, more or less. There was this whole thing with his father telling him, well, you know, if you must climb, don't let your mother know, as fathers often do. So he's climbing the tower. And because he finds out that he has to go... Or oh, this is because he has he finds out he's climbing the tower only because he found out that he has to go to the south with his dad and his sisters. Yeah, just his dad and his sisters. And um, he's kind of distraught. He was excited at first, but he's kind of distraught now because he realized that he has to leave all of his friends and his animals and stuff behind. And, you know, anytime you move to a, good, to a new place, it's always kind of like a sad moment. So... He's having one of those sad moments and he needs to clear his head and so he decides to climb. So he gets a particular portion of the tower because there's this tower in the house. And better better you than me, buddy, but I, I climbing he's climbing the tower at this point. And he gets a particular portion of the tower. He's used to going there because he describes the crows and whatever. But he gets there and he hears voices male and a female and they're talking about his father it doesn't sound like praise and doesn't sound like a good thing so he decides to investigate as one would he gets in a really precarious position because at one point they describe him as um using his knees to kind of like look around something like a bar or at, i don't know like a bar or wall but his knees are like hanging and he's locked in there and he's hanging like upside down it's kind of like a trapeze action a trapeze artist action so he's upside down or like a jungle gym action and he ends up seeing and there's no real way or no real nice way or pg way to put this but she he sees the queen and her brother having sex her twin brother, Jamie, the one that looks the same as her. 
her brother. The one who shared a womb with her. The queen. And the brother. Them two. Them two persons. So, can I just tell you, as you may have guessed from my saying it over and over, can I just tell you that my stomach is still turning up until this point thinking about it? Like, what in the heckin' heck is this witchcraft and a widgetry? What is this? What, like, what... Like, bro, like, I'm not naive. Like, I know that this is par for some cultures, right? But this is, this is, the, this is a lot. This is a lot for me. Like, but, I, I mean, this is, this is a lot. And on top of that, you're already doing this thing right so it's like adultery and then like incest i feel like not that i feel like the incense definitely caps out the adultery part because if it was just some other random guy i'd have been like okay well sissy cool whatever girl i mean you do you but it's whole incest bro and then it's like the adultery and then on top of that when they see bran you decide to drop Bran like a hot rock off the tower. How many ever story size? Because it's not like it's a short drop. It's really, really high with trees and everything. Like, Cersei and Jamie Lannister are so disgusting. And it's not even, I'm not even like Kiki and I'm trying to Kiki about it. Like, that's disgusting. There's, there's very there's nothing that any character in the book can do at this point to top this. I doubt it, because this is just everything is about about this 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 particular act was just so disgusting. Incest, adultery, murder, like, wait, like y'all for real, bro? Like I know I remember the Tajirans had you know they 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 marry in in as well. But, like, y'all serious, bro? Like, y'all twins, homes? Like, oh, God. Like, it's a sensory, it's a sensory overload. Like, a real sensory overload. And I might sound childish, but, like, come on. And then when in Tyrion's chapter, they find out that he might live, because I have to now flip back, because Tyrion's chapter came after Bran's chapter. When they found out that he might live when they found out that they and they kind of realized that they might get caught they actively go to wishing against him living because they're like oh he's going to die i know it and then jamie's like oh give me a good clean death bro i wish you would die at this point like i really want you dead at this point because like what the hell is this like really good grief but you know what? You know what I'm taking away from this chapter is the solace that Tyrion actually suspects something or that suspects that his brother and sister have something to do with it. I love that for us and I love that for justice. And I can't wait to see how he's going to put two and two together. Because like I said, Tyrion is a brilliant guy. He's smart. He has depth. And, you know... The fact that everybody's choosing to focus on his 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 size and his dwarfism and what they consider ugly features is going to be everybody else's downfall. And I love that for us. I love that for the book. I love that for the plot. I love that for him. And although I know that they more than likely will find a way to get out of it, I love that he's on the case at this point. This is I love that for us. Anyway, that is where I will stick and stay for this on this very sick note for this episode. Thanks for joining me today. I appreciate your esteemed company. Leave me a voice message if you have the anchor app. Leave me a tweet if you don't at Tubulon Book W One or Miss Mike Seven Seven Two. Make sure I put the at sign before both of them. I love to hear your thoughts. Please don't spoil any of this for me. Any Game of Thrones stuff for me. 
but i love to hear from you guys on this particular topic be sure to subscribe we are officially now available on six different podcast stations google Podcasts, spotify breaker pocket cast radio public and of course anchor we're on youtube as well uh turbulent bookworm podcast is the home of the hidden news runes podcast as well as the future home of hopefully many podcasts to come thanks for listening i appreciate your company today and every day but in the meantime stay safe stay focused folks it was nice but i'm gone